Welcome once again to The Breakfast. And now let's share with you things that happened today in history. I'm going back to the year 2013. And it is very, very, you know, uh, close to some of the things that we've mentioned or spoken about already uh, here on, um, on off the press when we spoke about security. And now the Nigerian government has continued to tackle and the moves that uh, are still necessary in order to rid the country of these elements of uh, um, insecurity. Um, in 2013, on this day, uh, the Boko Haram, of course, uh, the Nigerian army killed hundreds of Boko Haram members. Uh, it says uh, 14 were killed uh, in a Nigerian army raid. Um, it killed uh, some 600 people after a recent attack by Boko Haram militants on uh, a barracks. Uh, the Nigerian army said the attack was uh, successfully repelled and many attackers were killed by the Air Force and ground troops. Amnesty International says satellite images have revealed three possible mass graves around the city. Hundreds of militants were said to have taken part in the attack on the Giwa barracks in Meiduguri. Boko Haram released its own video of the attack on Giwa, showing crowds of people walking out of the barracks. And, uh, of course, uh, once again, Amnesty International said parties uh, were violating international law and wanted the United Nations to help investigate possible war crimes against humanity. Uh, we've continued to speak about Boko Haram since 2009, and that was, of course, uh, the year that it you know, started here in Nigeria. Um, but it was on this day that hundreds were killed after the attack on Giwa Barracks by Boko Haram uh, in uh, 2013 in Nigeria. Um, so, so, so this um, story really um, has you know, many angles to it. First of all, it is the... It was the era where there, you know, were numerous, you know, and that continued for a while. We just haven't heard about it in, um, in you know, some time now. Um, there were, you know, continuous attacks on army barracks in northern Nigeria. Uh, the Boko Haram sect at that time, you know, was, you know, either carrying out bombings or attacking the army uh, multiple times. In the current administration's um, um, time, in the last five years, we've also heard of multiple times when soldiers, you know, in their dozens have been killed. The government sometimes denies, and, you know, other times it's not possible to deny. Um, um, but it really also showed the boldness with which the insurgent group was moving with at that time. Uh, some people would argue that it you know, maybe it was also because their tactics were changing. Bombs were no longer as effective as they, you know, thought that they, you know, needed at that time. And so they went ahead to go to get even bolder and attack the Nigerian army. Nigeria has lost hundreds and hundreds of, um, of its um, um, soldiers uh, to the war against insurgency. Uh, there's continued to be clamor for, you know, more um, 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 uh, pay and, of course, uh, more... Uh, um, respect, you know, and um, um, honorarium to the family members of these soldiers mm -hmm. after they pass. But you know, those are some of the angles. And also the Amnesty International angle, you know, which has, you know, continued to uh, call out the Nigerian government and Nigerian security uh, forces for once in a while uh, their um, um, war crimes and for going, you know, beyond the rules of engagement for um, extrajudicial killings and the likes. There's also those angles. Um, if you hear that 600 persons were killed um, in, you know, in a response to the attack on Giwa Barracks, you know, how, how are we sure that 600 of these people were Boko Haram fighters? And how many Boko Haram fighters truly exist um, in northern Nigeria? Mm. These, you know, are the questions that, you know, you would need to ask. How many of these people, you know, are you sure were armed and dangerous and, um, you know, were, um, you know, were killed because, well, they attacked the army? How many of them were killed simply because, well, they seemed to be part of the Boko Haram sect? If you remember also in Zaria, when the uh, Shiites, you know, incident happened, official figures said 347. Other people would say, they, you know, maybe, you know, a lot higher than that. Um, these are some of the, you know, moments where the Nigerian army has been accused of extrajudicial killings and, you know, crimes against humanity. But it was on this day that the army repelled uh, the attack, on, or rather after the attack, and responded uh, to the attack on Giwa Barracks, and hundreds of Boko Haram fighters were killed. Yes, like you mentioned, the Amnesty International angle, you know, always comes into play, and we know what's is the stance of the federal government regarding Amnesty International saying they always want to bring out the negatives and, you know, say things without facts. But, you know, Amnesty mentioned how lots of people were killed in detention facilities and how this 
these you know, killings were extrajudicial and that they should be investigated because what was the proof really that these people were Boko Haram terrorists? Eyewitness accounts at that time back in 2013 said, you know, they, the army told them to lie down and they just started shooting people on the ground. So the details about this event, March 31st, you know, it's still shrouded in lots of controversy, but that's what happened today in history. Yes. And today in history, a popular American activist, rapper, entrepreneur, Nipsey Hussle, very popular guy. He was shot this day in history just outside his clothes store in 2019. Nipsey Hussle, you know, had been nominated for a Grammy Award. You know, he was loved by Americans and lovers of music as well. And uh, police said this could have been a personal issue between him and a suspect identified as Eric Ronald Holder Jr. You know, he allegedly shot Hustle 10 times in the parking lot of his store. The gunshot wounds were, were just very gruesome. You know, this led to the death of Nipsey Hussle, who was 33 years old at the time. Two others were also wounded. One was taken to the hospital, you know, because of this incident. A grand jury indicted Holder on one count of murder, two counts each of attempted murder and assault with a firearm, and one count of possession of a firearm by a felon. You know, when Nipsey Hussle passed away, lots of celebrities, you know, offered condolences on their social media platforms. Within a, a month of his death, about 50 murals dedicated to the rapper were painted in the city of Los Angeles. We saw, you know, big names in the American music industry that at the 2020 Grammy Awards, DJ Khalid, Kirk Franklin, John Legend, McMill, you know, giving tribute to Hustle in honor of his legacy. And the documentary, you know, about the life of Nipsey Hustle is uh, in development at Netflix, um, and that should be out pretty soon. Um, it it, it, it um, was one of the um, incidents that you know, the year 2020, uh, some people would argue that, you know, the, the 2020 year, aside, you know, being a, a year of a pandemic, was also a year that had certain moments that were entirely shocking and huge losses to the world. Uh, George Floyd was one of them, and then Nipsey Hussle, you know, was also one of them in the American music industry, in the music industry across the world, actually. Not just because of his um, um, music, because, of, you know, he's, you know, one of those rappers that, you know, was, you know, mostly on the background. Um, but because of his philanthropy and because of, you know, the person that he was in his, you know, community, he's one of those people that the world mourned and the United States, you know, um, a black community really mourned yes. because of the influence that he had in his community, trying to get more and more black people off the streets and um, assisting, you know, a lot of black families and a lot of young black men. And that is, the, you know, one of the reasons his death was entirely painful. Um, Eric Holder, uh, who was accused of killing him, um, through investigations, nobody you know, was ever really, really sure of you know, the reason he shot Nipsey Hussle. Apparently, they had a, you know, a, you know, an argument. Eric Holder went back home, got a weapon, you know, came back and shot him you know, mm -hmm. uh, multiple times. Um, and there's still no you know, clear-cut explanation as to why um, you know, he killed Nipsey Hussle. But the pain, really, for Nipsey Hussle's death was you know because of two angles you know first of all his music and then second because of who he was in the black community and the um the things that he did for a lot of young black people across um, america so um just yesterday yesterday march 30th you see that uh, eric holder's lawyer is asking for reduced bail for eric holder they're saying they want to cut down the bill to about four million but that case is still in court. Wow. Yes, that's what happened today in history, uh, 2019, March 20, March 31st. Uh, the rapper Nipsey Hussle was shot by his friend, close associate, Eric Holder. All right, uh, that's uh, what we have for you today in history. We're going on a short break when we come back. Our first major conversation for today, we've spoken a little bit about it, and that is the National Association of Resident Doctors. Uh, unpaid salaries, the likelihood of a strike on the 1st of April tomorrow, and, you know, what their demands are, how the government can also step up to ensure that they uh, pull back this, you know, um, uh, threats of a strike. We'll talk about that right next.